Today we're uh, going to talk about spinning up sites with Local by Flywheel. And again, my name is Dennis Densmore. Um, you can reach out to me, any one of these channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Twitter, or just email me directly. If you've got questions about the presentation or questions about Flywheel, WordPress, whatever, um, hit me up. So um, I'll skip through these. She did a good job introducing me. So um, started as a screen printer. Um, moved to Arizona, I attended Collins College. I originally did graphic design, but really got into the web and kind of took off from there. Um, did a lot of Flash development, which is cool because I learned PHP and MySQL, which WordPress is built on. So kind of got a head start on what I did in WordPress. Um, started building WordPress in 2010 and never looked back since then. I still love everything about WordPress. Um, I worked for some of the biggest agencies in the Valley. I worked for Terra Lever, Lane Terra Lever, Blue Media. So I've been really lucky to have some really good jobs around here. Um, I now wor work full-time full for Lightside Interactive, my own company, and I work in Cahoots, a co-working space in Midtown Phoenix. Um, I love to play FIFA. Uh, the last job I was at, we played a couple soccer matches during lunch, and we'd play a soccer match before I would leave, so I got really competitive with that. I love to golf. I love to play the guitar. When I'm not doing that, I love to hang out with my sidekick, Shakespeare. Um, I will say this, please save your questions till the end. I'm gonna buzz through this real quick. I'm gonna have some live screencasts that you guys can watch. I'll take questions at the end, but I wanna make sure I can get through as much as I can. So, um, local environments are really cool. Before I started developing locally on my own computer, um, I used to have a, a separate staging site, which was okay. I mean, you could put stuff up there, you could test it, but you used to have to use like an FTP. So, all right, I'm gonna push this PHP file. Now I'm gonna push the CSS file. I hit refresh, okay, that didn't really work, so now I gotta push them again. Well, now the FTP hung up, so it was pretty painful and pretty slow. Um, so it was also just really difficult to make quick changes. Um, I got a new job with some better developers, and they really taught me pretty quickly, and they said, it's pretty much a requirement that you start using local websites to do your development. So I was really lucky that they pushed me in that direction. I used MAMP at first, which was good, um, but today I'm gonna show you how to use local by Flywheel. So now that we're doing local development, um, you can set up an environment with a matter of seconds with WordPress already installed, which is a huge bonus. Um, you can pull down a live site, like let's say you're testing a site or you take over a site or you're debugging a site, you can pull it down, you can set it up locally and you can really kick the tires, you can look underneath the hood, you can really do a lot of cool things with it. Um, you can test it in different hosting environments. Sometimes I pull down a site, it was the wrong version of PHP. Um, an old developer or someone did it before me and they were using a different version of PHP. So there's a lot of things you can change and test. Um, you can also enable PHP debugging, which is really, really great. Um, I use PHP Storm now and at my last job, um, I was still using an older, um, older piece of software and I was kind of stubborn to change, but when my boss showed me the debugging that he did, I said, wow, I have to have that. Um, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. But you can also test caching, which is important. A lot of times you'll build a site and you have it working locally or you have it working on your staging site and you push it to the live site and it's got some really advanced caching and it can actually do some negative things that you didn't really think of. So that's really good to test locally. All right, so installing local by Flywheel. This works on a Mac, this works on a PC. You go to their site, it's a free download. You put in your name, your email, pretty basic stuff. Um, you download the site and it just installs like it would a normal uh, you know, PC or Mac program. Spinning up a site on local is as easy as one, two, three, and we'll go through that real quick here. So there's a site setup that you set up initially. Um, you set up your environment, and you set up the WordPress install. So I'm gonna go through this real quick. I'll review it here in a second, but all right, I'm gonna hit a new site. You name the site. This is really just kind of the label of what you wanna do. Underneath advanced options, it's gonna create a URL for you. I always kind of check it. I'm picky about what my URL is, even though it's only local. Um, and so the, the WordPress setup here, you enter your password. The other stuff is usually set up from your initial install. And I'm gonna hit add site. So it starts doing the things in the background and installing WordPress, installing a local site. And now it's already up. So I click uh, view site. And now I have a site running locally on my computer with WordPress installed, the latest version, just like that. We did it, that's it. Um, in under 30 seconds, we spun up a new local site. Um, so let's review how we spun up this site. Um, and we'll also review the other options that you can do for it. So the easiest one, two, three, the first one is the site setup. 
we have some advanced options. So we can say um, what our local site domain is going to be. Again, it's going to kind of take its best guess from whatever you label it. Um, but sometimes you maybe want to add a different dash or you want a different naming convention. Maybe you want it the same as what your live site is. So you've got that option. Um, your local site path where it's actually stored on your computer. Um, when you set up Flywheel the first time or local by Flywheel, um, it's going to have a default folder. Maybe you want to change it. Usually I just leave it the same. Um, and you can also create from a blueprint, which is really cool. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so let's go through this again because we went through it really quick the first time. So the first step of the site setup, um, again, we're going to give it a name. And under the advanced options, we're going to look at um, the domain setup. where it's actually stored on your local computer. Um, I just leave it in the Flywheel uh, Sites folder that I've set up for myself. And an option of whether or not you wanted to use a blueprint. We're not going to do that for this uh, part now, but I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. So uh, set up the environment. So there's two main uh, environments that you can choose. There's a preferred environment, which is preferred by Flywheel. Now, Flywheel is a hosting company, much like Bluehost, um, much like WP Engine, like GoDaddy. Um, but it's really built, um, it's managed WordPress, so it's really built for WordPress. Their preferred environment, um, when you set it up locally, it's going to match what they have up there. So it'll use varnish caching. It'll have like uh, all their advanced options that they have up there. Um, so it mirrors their hosting with the caching, as I said. Um, it supports connect to Flywheel. So once you set your site up locally, with the push of a button, you can actually push your site up to a Flywheel um, account, which is really, really slick. Um, but you have to use a preferred environment to do that. Um, local PHP, however, is not um, enabled uh, on the preferred environment, which is kind of a bummer. Um, talk to them. Hopefully, they're going to fix that in later versions. So here, we're going to set up our uh, preferred environment. It's really just selecting the left tab. And it's got a little green light there um, saying that it supports uh, Connect the Flywheel. Um, so that's as easy as that one. Now, the custom environment, you can do a lot of other things. This is what I was talking about. Like, maybe you're pulling down a site. Maybe you need to change the PHP version. Maybe you need to change the SQL version. You've got all your different options in here. So um, again, you select your custom environments, your PHP version, your web server, your MySQL version. Um, but this supports local PHP debugging, which is huge. Um, I'll show you that uh, in a minute as well. Um, again, that totally changed my life and made me a much better developer by doing that. Um, so here, we're going to select the custom environment. You can select a different PHP version. Um, in the PHP version up here, it's got like a little download sign. And it's saying, hey, we don't have that version of PHP installed on your computer. So it's going to have to do that. Um, you can change between Nginx and Apache. Honestly, I'm not like a super advanced uh, server guy. Um, so I just kind of go with what works best. But I have had a site that didn't work on Nginx, and on Apache it did, and vice versa. So sometimes it's easy to change. Or sometimes you need to change it, and it's easy to do. And you can also change your version of MySQL. So the setup WordPress. Um, when you initially install um, Local by Flywheel, um, you have some defaults, like uh, WordPress username. So it's always going to be, mine's like lights out admin. Um, you're going to have a WordPress password. That you have to enter every single time. Um, and a WordPress email, which again, it takes your default of what you've set up initially. Um, It'll have some advanced options, which is whether or not it's a multi-site. And if you choose a multi-site, whether you want it to be used by the subdirectory or if you want it to be used by a subdomain. So let's look at that part of the setup. So in here, you enter your WordPress password. Um, you could just use like password or your name because you're just doing it locally. Um, but I still recommend using a strong password because maybe you're going to upload it um, or push it you know, in a couple weeks and you forget, like I've got a really weak password. So best practice is always to use a good password. Um, and whether or not it's multi-site and the multi-site options that you want to do in there. OK, so that's how we do it. Um, now that we've spun up a site, let's look at uh, how to make changes to a server once it's up live. And we'll also look at the other cool features that local has to offer. So updating the site setup, um, you can change the WordPress version. Um, actually, if it's out of date, you can just update WordPress with the click of a button. Um, you could do that in your browser as well, but this is sometimes a little bit easier. Um, you can change your PHP version. Again, if you're testing and you're really trying to fix what's wrong with the site and trying to debug it, that's a good way to go. Um, again, newer versions you might have to download uh, if it's PHP versions. And you can change the web server, like I talked about before, from Nginx to Apache or vice versa.
Um, so once the site is set up, you come in here and you're in the site setup tab. Um, so you come in here. This version of WordPress is out of date, and we'll look at the actual site that's running locally. It says, hey, you know, uh, WordPress needs to be updated. You can do it with just a click of a button in here. It seems to work quicker, um, and it seems to be a little bit easier to update that there. Um, so it's updating right now. Boom, it's updated. You come in here, hit refresh. Okay, so we're on the latest version of WordPress. So you can also update the latest version of PHP. Again, if it has a little download icon, it may take a minute to, uh, to, to download that dependency. You can change uh, server types, um, and that's it for that. So also, you can change the site domain. Now, this is really cool because, you know, again, maybe you're just picky like I am. Sometimes you want to change the actual local name of it. Um, but normally, when you change a domain name with WordPress, you have to do find and replace in the database. Um, this automatically does it for you. Um, so it can be great for deploying to a staging site. Let's say you've got your site running locally, and OK, that's the way I want to go, and I'm pushing it to a staging site. And um, I can change the domain name on the fly and then just kind of push it up. Um, it's also great from changing it from a www to a non dub 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 or vice versa. So in here, you can just click change, and it'll allow you. So you go into the site setup and you click change. This will allow you to actually just enter a new domain name, um, click change domain, and that rolls all the way through. Again, this seems like pretty simple to do, but this tool actually makes it really simple. Um, so we change it from local to staging. I can change it to .com. It's actually using your local host file. So even though it's .com, it's going to find this one before it finds the one that's on the web. So even if you want to pull down a live site and you don't want to actually have to change the domain name, you can just work with the .com and you're actually working with your local site. Um, or you can change with the www. So I'll skip ahead a little bit here. Um, so it has some really cool tools as well, and one of them is a database tool. Um, it uses um, two options. It can use Adminer, which is um, a great option to update and manage your database. Um, it's very similar to PHP My Admin. It's a web-based way to actually uh, manage your database. Um, or you can use SQL Pro um, on the Mac, at least. I don't know what options they have for PC. I actually haven't tried it. But for on the Mac, uh, uh, SQL Pro is a really cool tool. So first, we'll look at Adminer. Um, when you come into the database tab, um, you click on Adminer, and it'll actually just launch the web-based version of it. So in here, you can go into um, one of the great things is actually Um, if you want to just uh, update any kind of option in your in your website, that's an easy thing to do. Um, oftentimes, it's easy to export your database, um, which is great if you're making any kind of um, extreme changes or you're doing any kind of testing or um, trying some new things out. Um, it's really easy to export your database, which is you know a huge cornerstone when you're actually doing any kind of local development. So you click and make sure that you're saving it as a file. You export it, and it goes right into your downloads folder, um, which is really cool. When I've done like any kind of new development, a lot of times I'll, I'll do a lot of saves of my database just to make sure I'm saving stuff as I go. The other option is a SQL Pro option, which does really the same thing, but it's a desktop version of it, which is a little bit more slick. Um, it seems to update quicker, um, and um, it's just kind of what you prefer. Uh, but this is a really cool tool that um, is more of an app version of it. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to come into my site options. I'm going to change the uh, tagline of the website um, and also show you how to download the um, latest version of your database. Hello, WordCamp. So again, the export works pretty similar. Again, it's just a little bit of a different interface, um, but a really cool tool to have. So SSL. Um, nowadays, it's really, really easy to have every site be SSL. And there's so many options to do it. And so it's highly recommended. But if you're using a WooCommerce site or anything where you're collecting any kind of sensitive data, it's super important to do for your clients. The problem used to be. Um, 
if I would download a site that's SSL um, using MAMP or using other programs, sometimes it's harder to get it running. It's super easy in local. Um, so some of the options, it'll show you the open SSL version. It'll uh, show you the certificate. Um, but the easy part is really just a click of a button. Again, it's a must have when pulling down a secure site. I used to pull down secure sites and sometimes I would just not use the SSL, um, but you kind of run into problems. So the third tab, when you're actually in the site setup, you come in here and it's SSL. Right now, I haven't turned this on, so it's kind of grayed out. And we look at the site and we're gonna look at it as an HTTPS site. And you guys have probably seen this before, your site is not secure. Um, so here we just click the button trust and it's basically installed an SSL for us. So now we'll refresh it. And it works just as you'd expect. And if you don't do that, not only can you say like, okay, I do trust this site, but it's gonna give you errors of, hey, you're using mixed content. Some content's being loaded secure, some of it's not. So this is really, really slick. And basically by default, I turned it on because all my sites that I'm running um, up on the up on the web are HTTPS anyhow. So just really helps for consistency. Um, so let's look at some utilities. Blueprints is really, really cool. So um, whenever I develop something locally or start a new project, I always use advanced custom fields. That's my favorite plugin. And um, I use usually a boilerplate. Um, I've got a couple different ones. Um, some of them are really slim, others are really built out. But this can really help your, um, your, your time frame of okay, I'm gonna use these same plugins, I'm gonna use the same theme. Um, so you can build Word, WordPress sites faster with Blueprints. Um, you can save your themes and plugins in a neat pre-installed little package. Um, so I set up one called Lights Out Bones. It's like it's just a simple, simple framework theme. Um, it's really basic when I start and then I really add everything to it. And again, I, I add uh, advanced custom fields. So uh, going back to the beginning, we're gonna set up a new site. We're gonna call it uh, WordCamp Blueprint. 2018, and under our advanced options, there's an option for, I'm gonna choose Lights Out Bones. Um, so now this is spinning up. It does take a little bit longer because it's pulling in the database of what I saved before. It's also pulling in a plugin, and it's also pulling in a theme. So it does take just a little bit longer, but it's still only like 30 seconds. Um, so we'll let that spin up for just a second here. So again, I don't have any styles or anything. This is just like super boilerplate for me. Um, and we'll log in, we'll take a look at the site. And just starting out, my favorite plugin is installed. And go and look at the theme. All right, it's the theme that I had set up. So, um, you know, it, it really pays to start off with something. Maybe you use uh, Bootstrap, uh, maybe you use a certain kind of theme, Beaver Builder, whatever it may be. Um, it, it's worth your time if you're always doing that to, to set it up initially and use that blueprint. Some other utilities, Mailhog. So this is really cool. I've developed a lot of custom websites where there's custom notifications to clients. And sometimes you could be developing on it and say, all right, there's a test email that went out and maybe it actually emailed a bunch of users and it wasn't supposed to. Or the actual admin address was um, for the main your main client. You're a CEO of a company and that's going to them. So you don't really want that to happen. So Mailhog is an email testing tool for developers. Um, it's got like a similar UI as Gmail or a Yahoo platform, um, and it'll intercept an email. So um, anything you're doing locally, any email you send out will actually get filtered through this. Um, again, it prevents test emails from going to your clients. Um, so we'll come in here underneath utilities, you enable Mailhog, and it'll actually pop open the window. So it just looks like a Gmail or a Yahoo mail, and it already shows there's an email in there from the first um, site setup. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the email address, the main one for the WordPress site. Um, and whenever you do that, it's gonna say, hey, we sent out an email and you have to confirm that you wanna change your email. So we're gonna do that here. We'll click Save Changes and it's giving us a message, hey, you need to confirm that. So normally that would get sent to that email, but here it's actually in Mailhog. So we'll take a look at it. You can confirm it if you wanted to. Um, so just a really, really slick utility for local development. Connect to Flywheel. So I talked about this in the beginning. Again, you need, uh, it'll pair up local by Flywheel uh, for a delightfully simple development workflow. That's kind of their language that I stole. 
Um, you can push or pull your site to a flywheel hosting plan with a push of a button. And it's not supported with custom environments. So if you're doing some really good debugging with like changing PHP and stuff, as we talked about, that is not supported at this time. Um, so we're going to spin up a new site. We're going to call this uh, WordCamp Flywheel. Connect. And for this one, we're going to make sure it's a preferred environment. You'll see the green light on underneath it saying, hey, this supports it. Enter a password. So I've already gone, before I did this demo, um, I've already gone and set up an actual hosting slot for it, like in my Flywheel uh, hosting account. Um, so this gets spun up, and we're going to take a look at the local site. That's just how you push the Flywheel. So we'll look at the local site. How many people have actually used Flywheel? Okay, so we got a good amount of people. Okay, so good. So in here we'll make a change and kind of show like, hey, this is a local one, and then I'll show the live one and kind of show how, how the difference is. Um, I will connect, so cool. So again, this is our local site. And in my actual Flywheel account, um, I've already set up a, a hosting space for it. So when you click the Connect button, you can say Push to Flywheel. And it'll basically just ask. I've already connected my account to it. Um, so I'm going to push it to WordCamp Flywheel. It also creates a backup of it on your hosting account. So if you push it and you made a mistake, you can always roll it back, which is really slick. Um, takes a couple minutes. It actually doesn't take long. I've, I've pushed a bigger site, and I thought, wow, this might take a half an hour. But it took like less than three or four minutes. So um, it does a really good job of that. And there it is. So it's up on the, the Flywheel site. The, the pool works basically the, the same kind of feature. Um, you can also exclude the database. So let's just say you made a bunch of changes to your PHP files and your templates or your theme. Um, it's easy to just do that and not the database. Um, Xdebug. So this is what really, really turned me on to it as well. Um, it's an extension for uh, PHP to ass assist with debugging and developing. Um, I use it with PHP Storm. Uh, for this presentation, but I know it works with other IDEs as well. And you must have the Xdebug extension in Chrome for this to work. Um, I assume it works in other browsers as well, but I've only used it in the Chrome browser. Um, and again, this is not the, the debugging is not supported in their preferred environment. So you kind of have to choose, are you going to be pushing and pulling, or are you going to be doing local debugging? So I've already got this site set up. Um, uh, for the Xdebug, you just hit Enable. And so that actually starts working right off the bat. Um, there's a, the extension for Chrome. And I've already installed that before the demo. So this is uh, PHP Storm. And I just have, uh, I have the functions file opened. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on line 15. And that's basically going to say, um, and I'm also uh, putting globals in my watch. So I'm going to watch that PHP variable. Um, so I hit refresh. And because I put a breakpoint in there, it stops on line 15. So it's going to run the WordPress um, locally. But as soon as it hits that line 15, because I set a breakpoint, it says, wait, hang on. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to look at what we got going on here. Um, so I watched the variable globals. And if you saw, I actually opened up. Um, and saw what was inside that whole array. Um, over here in the variables section, it shows basically every variable that's inside of WordPress. So if you're building some kind of new theme, or if you're trying to build a plugin, or if you're building anything, um, and if it were the olden days where I would have to push to a staging site, I can't really see what's going on inside of PHP. And if something's not working, I could spit it out into the browser and kind of try and look at it. But again, that takes time. You have to push the PHP file through FTP. You have to refresh and hope that it's printing out the right variables. And so it's, it's crazy, and it takes a long time. Here, you've got this whole interface of saying, oh, I'm going to grab that variable, and here's what it actually equals. So 
really, really great for any kind of advanced PHP developing that you do. That all makes sense to everybody? I know I asked no questions yet, but <laughs> um, there's a live link feature. Um, so if you're developing a site locally, um, this will enable you to actually see it through the web. Um, so you don't actually have to push it anywhere. Um, so it's great for developing a staging site for a client. Um, maybe you're just doing a new feature and you say, hey, will you check this out and see if this is working? Um, be careful of it getting indexed. So Google can actually find these sites. Um, so it's really important that you actually make sure that it doesn't get indexed. And somebody actually interest, interestingly um, asked me at a meetup, they said, I haven't set up a local site because I'm afraid my computer is going to get hacked. I don't think there's any chance of that. And I've asked people who are smarter than me about that. And they said, you know, not that I know of. Um, but because it is connecting to your computer, maybe there's a vulnerability. I mean, everything's hackable nowadays, it seems. Um, I don't know any, anything about that, but I thought I'd bring it up, and maybe it's something to keep your eye out for. Um, but enabling the live link is just a button down there, and it's going to generate just kind of a random um, URL. And you pop that open, and now you're looking at this not from your local computer, but this is actually being served up through the web. Um, so again, like you could use this as like a testing um, for a client. Like, hey, here's how the new site's looking. This is how it goes. You don't have to push it up to the staging server. Um, so that's a really, really cool feature. Um, again, like in this demo, I'll show um, how to actually block it from robots, which I think most of us know how to do. Um, I make a couple changes and kind of show um, that it's actually changed through the, through the live section. But in your settings here, um, well, so I'll go ahead. I, I make a, I say, hey, this is a live link site. Save the changes. Um, we're looking at the actual, ah, uh, I'll skip through that. I'll take questions if you guys got. So that's it. Um, that's kind of how the live link works. Um, I'll take any more questions on that if you got any questions. Yes. Yeah, I can hear that. So um, it's a great question. So it, does this does this prevent you from using any other um, different kind of hosting plan? Um, is there anything that stops it from from doing that, or do you have to use Flywheel? Absolutely not. Um, the last place that I worked, we pretty exclusively used WP Engine, um, but this was just the best local environment that we could use. So you could still, if you um, if you want to use some kind of automated service that uses Git, um, you could do that. If you wanted to use FTP, you could do that as well. Um, so. That's just an extra feature that kind of pays if you if you have Flywheel. I just started using them because I like local so much, and it's easy for me to push and pull. Um, there's still some limitations, um, you know, uh, compared to setting something up super advanced for yourself. So um, you can use any hosting whatsoever. So this is really just a great tool to to get it running locally. Yes. Sure. Um, I don't know how it's done behind the scenes. So the question was, how does the live link work? And um, she works with her clients and really wants to show them as you're working. So that's one reason she hasn't done it locally. So I don't know how the technology works. I know some other advanced people could probably tell you. But you basically just enable it by clicking a button, and it's going to give you a random URL. It's kind of just so it's just generating something that you can see. You click on that link and you open it up, and it is showing you like so. You could you could come from your computer and look at what I've done on my local machine. So it basically is just like a gateway into your computer, right? Um, it it is a little bit weird, and I have had it to where it says like you're using too many resources. So it's it's somewhat limited, but it's just instant and a really cool way to show somebody really quick. You could still push it to a staging site and show your client and say, hey, you know, here's what I've done, but this is just another option. Does that make sense? Awesome. Absolutely, yeah. So it's being right, right. So um, 
she's saying, you know, it's, it's not just something that's on your local computer. It's a link you can send to your client. Absolutely. You no, it actually just goes through the web. And that's why it's generating kind of a random URL, because it, it needs to make sure that it's unique. Um, and your computer, I'm sure, has to be turned on, because it's really serving it through your computer, right? Um, so again, that's why it's dangerous if you don't go into your site settings and say, uh, do not allow robots or do not allow the site to be indexed. Google might index it, which could hurt you from an SEO standpoint if you have another site out there somewhere, right? So I've had that happen to other developers that I've worked with. It was a cool new feature, and they were like, hey, I'm going to use this. And all of a sudden, I was getting indexed, and it was actually hurting the SEO value because of kind of the duplicate content. Um, so you got to be careful with that. But um, it's, it's just another cool feature that it has. Good question. So the question is, setting up a blueprint, is there a lot to configure to it, or, or how is that set up? Um, so I have a list of sites right here. Um, let's. Uh, so the WordCamp, WordCamp Flywheel 2018, you basically right-click on it and save as a blueprint. And we're going to call the blueprint uh, WordCamp Flywheel 2018. Save the blueprint. It's saving right now. That's it. So you could spin up a new local site, get it, you know, here's my, uh, here's uh, Bootstrap, and here's SAS, and here's whatever you want it to be. Here's my Beaver Builder, here's Advanced Custom Fields. Save it as a blueprint. Next time you install a new site, you just um, use that blueprint. Yeah, good question. So, yes, yeah. Um, so the question is, can you access the, the files from your Mac? So I actually have a shortcut over here, and here's, like, all my sites that have been added. So as soon as you spin up a site, um, Flywheel Blueprint 2018, so you come in here and the structure is basically app, public, and then here's your whole WordPress site. So instead of having an FTP, all your files are right here. I crack open that PHP file, I start making changes, I open the CSS file, I make changes, it happens right there. And you think like, well, okay, it only takes a couple minutes to upload it to, but if, you're, if you have to do that 100 times, I mean, I actually saw a presentation talking about saving 30 seconds um, I, I don't I remember what the calculation was, but basically if you can save 30 seconds here and there, you can take a vacation, right? So this is really, really huge. Uh, um, of, I mean, it's been a game changer of, of building sites locally on my computer. Yes? Um, I still have, uh, the question is if you have MAMP or XAMPP running on your computer, do you have to get rid of that or does it conflict? I have had no issues with that. Um, I, I've, I have both installed on my computer. I just leave MAMP turned off right now because this has been so much better for me. MAMP's a fine tool, and I use that for years. But like configuring SSL um, or uh, HTTPS was difficult and, and uh, painful. Um, and it didn't have the same kind of tools that this has. Um, this just, plus like, um, if you, if you spun up a site on MAMP, it didn't have WordPress installed immediately. It didn't have kind of the WordPress configuration in it. It's great for spinning up a local site, but not really focused on WordPress. So that's why I like this so much better. Yeah. Yeah, good question. So if you're using another host like WP Engine or GoDaddy, is there a quick way to find out what they're using in their infrastructure? Um, a quick way, no. I mean, I, not that I know of. I mean, I'm sure you could do like a PHP info file um, and kind of try and figure it out. Um, I actually asked some of the other developers I worked out with, um, like the caching is tough. If your caching isn't the same environment, and I've talked to other, again, developers that are better than me, and I was like, how can we get the environment to match what they do? But some people aren't going to tell you their secret sauce, right? So, yeah, yeah. But again, if you if you use Flywheel, then you know you're going to be using their same environment if you use it preferred. So there is an advantage to using that and kind of keeping it all under one roof. Um, any other questions? Yeah? OK. I'm not exactly sure. So you're not using a Windows or? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, 
Uh huh. So the question was, she works on Windows but uses Linux and Unix servers. Um, I think if you just installed it on Windows itself, it's going to take care of all the platform and stuff underneath it. So it's really, they pride themselves, they actually say it's built for designers. So, um, you know, yeah. Exactly, yeah. This is this is a lot more, you know, user interface, um, a GUI, and just kind of push button kind of style. So it's really slick. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she asked. Um, I mentioned uh, Manage WordPress about Flywheel, and uh, is this the same as Manage WordPress? So Manage WordPress sites um, usually they offer like daily backups. They will also automatically um, update the WordPress version for you. Um, so that's a little bit of a different thing. Um, like you could just you could get like a shared hosting account at GoDaddy, but it's not really set up. If it's on a managed WordPress site, it's not really built for WordPress specifically, and so you could there's more vulnerabilities to be hacked because it's not automatically updating WordPress, and it just doesn't have features for that. So that's what we mean when you talk about managed WordPress. So this is more of a local environment, so it's not technically kind of managed WordPress. It's just um, a local tool, uh, but it kind of ties into that. Um, so if you got any other questions, come see me afterwards. Um, here's some resources. CSS Tricks had a good article about it. Um, their their uh, documentation is really good. There's a link to Blueprints. Um, if you don't have time to type this out right now, uh, the slides will be available later. There's a few different cool articles about Xbug and also Connect the Flywheel. Um, and also, uh, capital W, capital C, Phoenix is a promo code. If you guys want to get a Flywheel hosting account, um, their cheapest one is 15 bucks, but um, I got them to give you a 50% uh, promo code for that um, just for WordCamp people. Um, so you can sign up for that and kind of try it out for 30 days. And even if you don't like it after 30 days, you can get your money back from that. But it, it, it at least saves you a little bit of money. So WC Phoenix, capital WCP. And thank you. Also, guys, um, come see me afterwards. I actually got some flywheel swag, so I got some T-shirts and stickers if you want that, or if you got any questions or want to talk more about it. Thank you.